Hey y'all, and welcome back to Coding with Minmer. On today's agenda, we're going to tackle LeetCode problem 921, minimum add to make parentheses valid. After that, we'll go over an actual variant of the original question that Meta asks. The majority of the time, you'll be asked the LeetCode problem straight up, but that doesn't mean there's a small chance you'd be asked the variant. Alright, let's read the problem statement. We're given a parentheses string, and we want to figure out the minimum add to make the parentheses valid. And ultimately, we want to return the minimum number of adds required to make our parentheses string valid. I don't know, I just thought the word adds would be more fitting. Okay, so first off, what is a parentheses string? Well, it's a sequence of characters of only opening parentheses and closing parentheses, like so. As you can see, you have some open parentheses but also some closing as well. Keep in mind, you can be given letters as well, but that's not too important. I'll address it later on. A second question I have is, what does it mean for this parentheses string to be considered valid? Or, and I'm going to use this synonym word a lot, balanced. Well, thank goodness, Likud has a huge block of text here to answer this. It's all confusing, but it just means we need a closing parenthesis after an opening parenthesis for it to be balanced. One close for one open. And just as a note, this closing parenthesis doesn't necessarily have to validate this open parenthesis. It could have matched this one for all I care. It doesn't matter, just so long as there's a close after the open. And while we're at it, here's another match, as well as this one, and lastly, this one. So in regards to our example here, we have a totally balanced parentheses string. We call there's one last part to the leak code problem. We need to return the minimum number of adds to make it valid and balanced. Since it already is, we just return zero. We didn't have to add anything. This is our answer and this is what we return. Let's look at some other examples of other cases where we may have to add and insert more parentheses. Let's take this extremely long example up next. As developers, we want to approach this in a programmatic way, but how? Here's the general thought. If for each open parenthesis, we want to detect corresponding closing parenthesis somewhere after it, then can't we simulate this with a left to right for loop through each character and track the number of extra open parentheses that have yet to be balanced? Let's name it extra opens like so. We'll increment this count if we see an open parenthesis, and we'll inversely decrement it if we see a closing parenthesis thereafter. Okay, that's the idea. Let's try it out. On the first iteration, we have one open parenthesis. So far, for all we know, it remains unbalanced. Therefore, we'll increment our count here. And as you'll soon see, maintaining this count means we'll know if we will have too many extra open parentheses or too few. That'll signify to us that we may need to add more parentheses to make the whole string valid. Okay, that's the gist of it. One last note, I'm also going to visually draw the value of our variable here as well, just so we can follow along easier. On the next iteration, we have a closing parenthesis. Fantastic. It'll validate our singular open parenthesis. This obviously means we no longer have the extra open. Let's decrement our variable here back to the zero. Let's denote that visually with the zero. If you take a look at our two characters so far, it's indeed a balanced string. Let's move on. Now up next, we have an open parenthesis. Let's up our count variable. That's all we'll do. On to the next iteration, we have yet another open parenthesis. Let's increment once more and pray that one day we'll encounter a closing parenthesis. Luckily, on the next iteration, we indeed have a closing parenthesis. We have two extra open parentheses as seen by this variable. Here they are, one, two. One of them will be validated. It doesn't matter which one at all, but sure, let's go with the closer open parenthesis. Since we saw a closing parenthesis, let's decrement our extra opens count to one. As is, we only have one more extra open parenthesis that must be balanced. Here it is. On the next iteration, we have another closing parenthesis. We know which open parenthesis it's meant for. It's this one right here. As always, we'll decrement our count, like so. 
Now, this is where it gets a bit interesting. We encounter yet another closing parenthesis, but this time we have zero extra open parentheses. And as you can see in our input string, there is no unmatched open parentheses anywhere. What do we do? Well, we have no choice but to add an open parenthesis to compensate. It doesn't matter where it is, just as long as it shows up before the closing parenthesis. But let's immediately question this action. Do we necessarily have to insert a character into our input string here? No, we don't. Remember, we only care about the minimum number of parentheses we had to add, not actually add it itself. If we did, that would be a big O of N operation that inside an already big O of N left to right for loop would result in a N squared exponential runtime solution. That's not ideal. Instead, what we'd like to do is also track the number of minimum ads, min ads for short, to make our parentheses string valid. And we can increment it any time we encounter a closing parenthesis, but don't have any open parentheses for it. So let's update that from zero to one. We just captured the insertion with our min ads variable. And since we did that, it's as if we did have an open parenthesis, there's no need to decrement our extra opens count. It remains at the zero. Okay, let's move on to the next iteration. As we can see, we have another closing parenthesis, same situation. We don't have any extra open parenthesis for it. This tells us that we need another open parenthesis to compensate. And just to show it visually, here is where it'd be for our string to now be balanced. Like the iteration before, we don't need to decrement our extra opens. It remains at zero. Okay, we have a few more characters. Let's move on to the next iteration where we have an open parenthesis. Okay, we follow our procedure. We just increment the number of extra opens and we move on. The same thing happens on the next iteration. So let's up this count to the two and we do it one last time with the third extra open parenthesis. And just like that, we've parsed the whole string. According to our minimum adds variable, we only needed to hypothetically add the two parentheses into our string to make it valid. Is this our final answer? Actually, it's not. I don't know if you caught it or not, but the same way we had too many extra closing parentheses, namely these two, we can also have too many open parentheses. That would be these three. That's represented by this variable that's literally named extra open parentheses. What do we do here? Well, for every extra parenthesis we have, one, two, three, we need a corresponding closing parenthesis after. This effectively balances our string. Therefore, to arrive at our final answer, we'll add the extra opens variable into our minimum adds. To say that minimally, we need to add three more. That gets us to five. Now we can confidently say that the minimum number of parentheses we would have had to add to make our string balance was five. We can visually verify that one, two, three, four, and five. Fantastic. Now we can go one step further and add another open and then a close right after that's technically valid. But why would we do that? That would be another two insertions that we didn't need. And remember our problem demands the minimum number and we'd prefer the five over the seven since five is less than seven. And as a last note, I mentioned it early on, but we can technically be given English letters as well in our string. But don't worry, it's just extraneous data. If on any given iteration, we don't encounter an open parenthesis or a closing parenthesis, we can simply ignore it in our left to right for loop. Okay, with that said, the time complexity is big O N because we needed a single loop through our input string. The space complexity is big O one since we only use two fixed variables that remain at two no matter how long our string gets. Okay, let's code this up. Okay, let's ready the two variables that we need before starting our for loop. First off, we need the minimum adds variable that will ultimately return this represents the minimum number of insertions to make our string valid. We'll return it before I forget. The second thing we need is the extra open parentheses variable. We'll initialize it to zero. It will represent the number of unmatched open parentheses at any given iteration. 
Finally, we can head into our for loop from left to right, going through each character. Now, there are three general possibilities of characters we can encounter. The first and simplest one is if we encounter an open parenthesis. If so, all we'll do is increment the count and move on. The second possibility is if we can be given a closing parenthesis, which if there are open parentheses before it, we'll just decrement the count. However, in the case where we have zero extra open parentheses left, we'll compensate by incrementing our min adds variable to say that we should add another open parenthesis to make our string valid. And since we do that, we'll just continue to the next iteration. There's no need to decrement the count. The last possibility, remember, is that we can be given English letters like A, B, or C, in which case we don't actually do anything. We'll remove this branch. It's technically obsolete. We're not done yet. The very last thing we do is if we have any extra open parentheses left over, we'll add it to our minimum adds variable to get our final answer. If we didn't have any extra open parentheses after our for loop, this value would be zero and there'd be no side effect here. Either way, it works out. And there you go, that's the code. With that said, let's dive into the variant. Just some context, this variant is rarely asked. I've only seen it a handful of times. It's more likely you'll be asked the OG Likud problem. But that said, the variant doesn't make it that much harder. It doesn't take too much effort to learn it. You kinda might as well. Okay, so looking over the problem description, all the text remains the same except for one part. Check out this lonesome paragraph down here. Unlike before, we now want to return the actual string itself after the minimum number of adds required to make the parentheses string valid. Meaning we no longer care about the number of minimum adds. Overall, I'd consider this a minor difference to the previous problem. So luckily for us, we can reuse the bulk of the algorithm. Let's go through an example and see what logic changes. Okay, so as you can see here, we have our input string, as well as the two variables we had in the previous problem. But remember, I had just said we no longer care about the integer count of the min adds. I wasn't kidding. Let's get rid of it. All right, now we can start our for loop. On the first iteration, we have an open parenthesis. Just like before, we'll increment our extra opens variable. I'll also draw the one here, just so we can follow along a bit easier, that on any given iteration, we can tell how many extra open parentheses we had. We're not done with the iteration yet. We want to build the resulting string, right? Let's do one more thing then. Anytime we encounter an open parenthesis, we'll blindly add it to a resulting string, perhaps called result. But how are we so sure that this open parenthesis is part of our answer? Well, remember, this problem is all about the minimum adds to make the parentheses valid. We can't remove any open parenthesis and make it not our problem anymore. So we have no choice but to balance it with either a closing parenthesis later on or with a closing parenthesis that we insert ourselves. In either case, we must retain the open parenthesis and that's why we add it to our string. Sounds good. We'll move on to the next iteration where we have yet another open parenthesis. Of course, it's not been closed yet, so let's increment this count to two, write it here as well, and push it to our result. Moving on, we've now encountered our first closing parenthesis. This does its job by validating the one of two extra open parentheses before it. Again, it doesn't matter which one, but sure, let's choose the open parenthesis that is closest. This in turn must mean that the closing parenthesis is part of our answer since it helped balance our input string. We'll push the closing parenthesis to our result. And just like before, since it decreases the number of extra open parentheses from two to the one here, we'll decrement our extra opens count to one. Let's denote it here as well. We move on to the next iteration where we have another closing parenthesis. We know what open parenthesis this is meant for. It's this one right here. Let's add it to our result and decrement our count. We no longer have any open parentheses to be balanced. They're all used up. On the next iteration, we have yet another closing parenthesis. This is one too many. We don't have enough extra opens. We have zero. What do we do here? Well, remember in the previous problem, we simply incremented a count named min adds 
to represent adding an open parenthesis. But in the variant, we actually want to do this for real. To simulate this, we'll add to our result the opening parenthesis, and then adding the closing parenthesis. And that's what we'll do when we have one too many closing parentheses. To clarify, yes, we add the open parenthesis right here, not in the actual input string, but I'll just leave this here to show it visually of what we're trying to achieve and how we achieve the balance. Remember, we don't decrement our extra opens, it remains at the zero. Okay, moving on, we have an open parenthesis. As per usual, we'll increment our count here to the one, and then push it to our resulting string. After that, we reach the last iteration where we have an open parenthesis. It's another one that has yet to be closed. Let's increment our extra opens here. As per usual, we'll add the opening parenthesis to our resulting string. We finish looping through every single character, but realize that just like in the OG problem, we could have extra open parentheses. What do we do here? Well, it's quite simple. However many extra open parentheses we have, one, two, as denoted by this variable here, we want to add the same number of closing parentheses, one, two. That way, our parentheses string would be indeed balanced and valid. This is what it would look like. We don't actually do this insertion in the original string here. We just add the two closing parentheses to our resulting string. Fantastic. And I mentioned it in the original leak code problem, but we can be given English letters as well. There's no rule that these characters affect the number of parentheses we have to add. So whenever we see them, we'll just push them into our string and do nothing more. Okay, and that's pretty much it. This is our ultimate answer, and this is what we return. Minimally, we had to insert three parentheses. Here they are, it's a bit hard to see, but this is the first one, second, and third. The time complexity is big O n, and the space complexity remains at big O 1, unless you want to count the auxiliary space of the result variable, in which case it'd be big O n. All right, the code doesn't change that much. Let's get started. Okay, just like we did in our walkthrough, the first thing we do is get rid of our minimum adds variable and replace it with a resulting string. We'll slowly build that string and return that instead. Let's remove all mention of min adds. Next up, let's inspect our if statements and see what needs to be changed. In the case we encounter an open parenthesis, we'll still increase our extra open parentheses count, but now we'll do one extra thing. Since we want to return the string itself, we'll push back and retain that open parenthesis. Otherwise, if we encounter a closing parenthesis, but we didn't have enough opens before it, we'll do two pushes. One, we'll push the open parenthesis to compensate and to make our string balance, and then we'll push the current character, the closing parenthesis. We'll continue to the next iteration. Now, in the case we did have enough extra open parentheses, we'll decrement it here, and since the closing parenthesis helped validate our string, we'll push it back as well. One last possibility, remember we can be given English letters, in which case it doesn't affect anything. It is part of our string and we will have to push it. The very last thing we do is add any extra open parentheses that we had left over to our result string. So we'll concatenate with our result, the number of extra open parentheses that we ended up with, like so. And there you have it. And yes, I realize that these three lines, one, two, and three, are all redundant. If you have an extra 30 seconds in your interview, you might as well wow your interviewer and refactor like so. Okay, that is it. I wish you luck on your interviews. And if you learned something today, please make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.